Hey, what's going on? It's Benny J from Stillwork, and we are here to do a quick and dirty Waves Tune tutorial by request from my friend Jeffrey. We're back into this As Misery Fades track, and we're looking at the chorus right here. Let's take a listen to Mark singing. Okay, so Mark's a great singer. He's got really nice pitch and great tone happening in there. But what we're gonna wanna do is just tighten that up a little bit closer and get rid of any of the variances that can sound unproduced or not quite as polished as they could. My favorite pitch correction uh, tool is still Waves Tune. I've been using it for a very long time. I probably have a million hours into vocal editing with it, and that could be why I love it so much, because it's very easy for me to get natural sounding results fairly quickly, and we're gonna do that right here. You're gonna wanna put Waves Tune on the very first plugin insert of the channel. Now, if you're using Pro Tools, you do need to add a rewire plugin in there, usually on an auxiliary bus. Some other hosts do need this rewire plugin happening to get it to work. Most modern hosts don't need it, especially uh, using the VST3 version. I normally use this in Samplitude, my preferred DAW, and in that one, I still do have the rewire plugin in most of my projects, even though the host will start it automatically when I open up the DAW. So what we have is Waves Tune inserted on the very first insert in our track. We've got the same processing happening in the last mix where we left it off. And what you need to do with Waves Tune is first analyze your vocals before you can correct them. This is not auto-tune. What's going to happen is we're going to play through the chorus and we're going to watch the tune plugin analyze the track. Let's do a little bit of that and see what happens. <laughs> Now you can see Waves Tune making corrections as we went, but we're not hearing any of those results yet. You first need to analyze the track before you can play back the pitch correction. Inside of this analysis, you can see a couple of quirky things happening here. What are these little sections here? What happens with the vocals um, that have some harmonic content in them, gritty vocals, distorted vocals, tube preamps on the way in, or just the natural overtones of the voice can cause some harmonic content to be picked up and Waves is jumping up to the octave and grabbing that as its analysis. We're just in the default settings right here, so we're just using a generic range. Mark is singing in a alto, kind of in the middle of an alto right here. So you can see the bottom of the range here is C2 and the top of the range is halfway between C4 and C5. He's right in the middle of that range. If we were to drop this to tenor, which removes those overtones from the analysis, and we're gonna select and clear selection, select, clear selection, we can reanalyze those sections and tune will not pick up the overtones. It will default back to the root note. So we've essentially re-scanned those small sections. Now that we have the pitch correction done, we've modified the range. We could leave this on tenor, high tenor. We could leave this on alto. The, uh, moving around these ranges in the analysis stage can help you make sure that you're not picking up so much, so much of the overtones and having those little fluctuation jumps. Now, we can take a listen 
to what the correct correction did on the first pass. Okay, so not bad on a first pass. There's just a couple of things that you'll hear as you move along. When you're doing deeper editing in here during a playback, you'll see waves tune switch over to override mode here for following the cursor. So you can zero in on a certain section while playback is still happening and the timeline will not follow. So let's step through this and see if we can find some spots to fix and how we're going to do that. Right from the beginning. Okay, right here, we're going to move the front end of this little block down and move this back into position here a little bit closer to this E note. We also have a little jump right here. So if we zero into this section, This little spot here we can clean up by multi-selecting these little blocks and we use these speed, note, transition, and ratio. These are the three most powerful controls here in tune. And what these will do on a multi-selection, they will change the transition of the correction from the original form. They will change the speed that that correction happens. And the percentage of that correction to the original. So we could tighten this right down to a flat line and then blend in the original as one way of correcting it. That's not what we're going to want to do. We're going to want to just keep this a little closer to the note. Something like this. This is a little sharp here. We're going to bring these two blocks down. We're going to bring this single block down and we're going to change this to be a little bit closer to this here F note. We're going to drag these peaks down a little bit, a little closer to the F. And we're going to smooth out this just a little bit here. Remember, this is the wrong note here. We're going to bring that back down to E and we're going to smooth it just a little bit using this transition. Exception is also incorrect. I'm going to bring this up to the F smooth this transition by moving these blocks around, multi-selecting, and then playing with our transition. It's going to bring that right up to an F. Okay, wake is on the wrong note. We're going to change that. We're going to bring wake up to E, and we're going to multi-select these blocks across that note, and we're going to change the transition and the speed just a little bit to smooth that out. Okay, so it does take a lot of work um, and practice with vocals to see exactly what the shapes look like. The transient at the beginning is usually a little bit above the pitch and then it settles in. It takes some practice to know what vibrato and variations are acceptable and sound natural. Waves tune 
does a really good job of automatically bringing the correction 95% of the way in on the first pass and you just need to tweak some of that stuff that I just showed you. It's a mistake to approach pitch correction as a bunch of straight lines and that's not what you're looking for. When you see a, a piece of vocal that looks like this, it's not going to sound out of tune to the ear. Something like this right here is a little bit flat. We could bring that a little bit tighter in. You really need to use your ears to judge if it sounds good or not. The closer you get it into tune and listen to it back, the more obvious any out of tune notes are. So in this example, we just covered some of the basics of Waves Tune using generally the default settings. In a future example, I can go over some of the more advanced features such as using the key and scale features and the vibrato functions to create or fix vibrato sections. So that's just a couple of tips on using Waves Tune in this context. Thanks for watching.